Okay, so I'm just going to close the bump map and open up our diffuse again. Okay, and I'm just going to start with the diffuse map and just uh, make the spec map from scratch. You could use the uh, bump map if you wanted to, but I'm just going to go back to this and just uh, restart. Okay, so uh, let's just go down to our paint base layer and we're going to do this a similar way to our bump map. Uh, I'm just going to desaturate some of them and we'll make adjustments. Okay, so for the paint base layer I'm just going to go and desaturate it. Okay, and let's go to the paint color variation layer. I'm actually just going to turn this one off, I think. I don't think we need it. Okay, and for the body dirt layer, let's select that. I'm just going to actually invert that layer with Control i Okay, and then let's, uh, I think I'll leave it on multiply. I might just take the opacity down a little bit. Right, I still want it to be there subtly, but uh, let's go down to maybe like 20%. Okay. And for our wing logos here, I'm just going to kind of do what I did with the bump map. I'm just going to darken them up a little bit. Okay, so let's uh, desaturate it first. Okay, and then we'll just open up the uh, brightness contrast. Alright, I'm just going to take the brightness down. Right, I want to have a, a little bit more specular um, highlight on the stickers because they'd be kind of glossy more than the paint, so I'm going to leave it a little brighter than the paint. Alright, let's do maybe uh, negative 70 or so. That should be fine for now. Okay, and we'll just do the same with uh, wing logo 2. Alright, desaturate. Brightness contrast, and we'll just take it down until it's about the same. Okay, and same with the Canada writing here. Let's just take that down a bit. Alright, desaturate. Just going to use the uh, hue saturation brightness here. And take it down a bit. Maybe negative 35 or so. Should be fine. Okay, and then for the Canada post one here, I'm just going to actually desaturate that. Alright, desaturate. And I'm just going to adjust the, uh, the brightness on it. Right, I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. I think the white would have more of a highlight than the, than the dark blue uh, color. So we'll just take it down a bit, maybe negative 60 or so. And OK. And then we'll do the same thing with the collection times. Desaturate. And I might just take that down a little bit in brightness as well. go down pretty low on this one. Maybe uh, negative 130 or so. And OK. Alright, then we'll move up to the uh, body metal layer. And we'll just desaturate that as well. Alright, desaturate. OK, and I'm just going to adjust the, uh, the brightness on this one. I'm going to take it down a little bit make it a little darker. Alright, we'll do maybe negative 60 or so for now. We can always come back and tweak these after. Alright, uh, for the gray base here, I think I'm just going to leave that as is, and same with the uh, the base dirt layer, I think I'm just going to leave that as is too. Okay, so we'll move up to the base grime, and we'll just desaturate it. Okay, let's open up the uh, brightness contrast. I'm just going to take it up a little bit in brightness. I still want it to be fairly dark because if there was, you know, grime and dirt on there, um, there's not going to be as much of a specular highlight as there would be up here where it's a little cleaner and the plastic's more shiny. Okay, so we'll just go up to maybe like 20 or so. And okay. All right, and then we'll move up to the base splatter large. All right, I might just leave that as is. I don't think I really need to tweak it. Okay, and for the small splatter here, We can probably uh, leave that as well. All right, I might actually just turn off the large splatter. I don't think I really need it on there. Okay, so we'll turn that one off, leave the uh, small splatter as is, and we'll just move up here to the uh, base grime layer. We can probably turn this one off as well. Okay, so we'll just go up to the color variation layer. All right, and let's desaturate this. Image adjustments, desaturate. Okay, and I'm gonna invert it with Control I. Okay, and let's just change the uh, the brightness a little bit. All right, I want to keep the paint fairly dark because it would be really dirty and it wouldn't have a lot of highlight on it, so we don't want to go too bright. All right, I'm just going to tweak this a little bit. All right, we do want to have some variation in the uh, the highlight though on the surface, so let's take this up to maybe 45 on the brightness, and we'll just leave the contrast pretty much at zero. Okay, for that layer, and okay. 
All right, the scratches, we want them to be white, obviously, so we'll get a nice highlight on them. So I'm just going to turn off the stroke, I think. All right, we could probably leave the stroke even turned on for that. It's a really small detail. It's not really going to matter. Okay, so for the dark uh, scuffs up here, I think we'll actually leave these. Uh, we don't want any kind of highlight on that because if it got kicked or, you know, whatever by a boot, it's going to have, like, rubber or a scuff mark, and it's not really going to have a highlight. So I think I'll just leave it like it is and we'll move up to the light scuffs okay and we do have some color in these ones so I'm just going to desaturate it okay and we'll just leave it a lighter color on those guys alright so for the foot metal alright we can probably leave that one as is and for the slot metal alright I might leave that a little a little brighter than the rest um, it just so it has more of a you know a metal chromish kind of a highlight on it all right, might take the opacity down just slightly on it. All right, let's lower the opacity maybe like 60% or so, and we'll just leave it as is. Okay, and we'll move on to our text layers. Let's actually just zoom in on this up here. Okay, and I want to leave these somewhat dark just so it looks like maybe some dirt and grime is actually, uh, you know, in those recesses. All right, so we don't want to have as much highlight on that as we would on the outside part. So let's just open it up, turn off the uh, inner shadow. Okay, and I think I'm going to leave the color just dark gray like that, but I'm going to do the blur like we did on the uh, bump map. Okay, so we'll do filter, blur, okay, and then we'll do the same with the uh, pull text layer. All right, turn off the inner shadow. Let's actually go and find this. All right, let's change the color before we uh, do anything. All right, so back to the text tool, and on the uh, pull layer there, I'm just going to select it, and we'll just change the color on this guy. Alright, maybe like that, and we can probably go a little darker. Alright, I'll just go down to a, a pretty dark gray, and OK. Turn off our effects, and we'll just do the blur on this one. I'm right, just going to click off that. Alright, blur, just to blur it out a bit. OK. Alright, so we're getting there. Um, and again, this is pretty quick to do. Um, it's not going to take us near as long. Alright, so let's select the uh, tag layer and we'll just go up to that. Okay, so for this one, I'm just going to invert it with Control I. And let's change the mode to uh, soft light. Okay, just so we can actually see it. Alright, let's actually zoom out so we can uh, see it against the surface. Okay, I'm just going to take the brightness down on a little bit. Alright, so we'll do uh, image adjustments, brightness contrast, and just lower the brightness down a bit. Alright, I wanted to have a, a slightly more specular look to it than the, than the paint. Because if it was done with a felt, it might actually be a little bit shiny. So we'll leave it there just a little bit. All right, let's take this down so it's just subtle. Do like maybe negative 70 or so. That should be fine. And OK. All right, and the boot print, we'll leave that um, as is just in case. Um, you know, it should really, I guess, have a, a bit of a duller highlight on that. Um, you could take it off if you wanted to, but if there was rubber on there, or dirt, it's going to be a little bit duller than the rest. Okay, so I think I'm just going to leave it as is for that guy. But you can take it off if you want to. Alright, let's just go down to the foot metal layer there. Alright, I'm just going to desaturate that even though it probably doesn't really need it. Okay, and we'll leave it pretty dark because these pieces were dark on our, uh, our reference pictures and, you know, these would be dirty because they're right against the ground so they're not going to have as much of a highlight as the door up here and the other pieces. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to make another quick pass through. All right, I might turn off the paint dings. I don't know if we really need those on here. So we'll just turn it off. Okay, we'll just move down. Just make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, I might leave that one. Okay, so I might turn on this base grime layer again that we turned off earlier and just desaturate this one. Alright, let's do an image adjustment on that, brightness contrast. I'm just going to brighten it up a little bit. Maybe like 60 or so. And okay. Alright, so I think that's really all we need to do for our spec map. Um, you can take more time and, you know, adjust it. And when you actually light your scene into your render, um, you know, you might 
notice that you have to come back in here and you know brighten parts up or darken them down but uh, I think for the tutorial I'm just gonna leave it like this and uh, and we'll move on and actually uh, put our shader together in max okay so I'm just gonna do a save of this all right we don't want to accidentally save over our diffuse maps so let's actually call this spec okay and we'll just do a PSD again save and okay and I think I'm gonna save out a JPEG uh, version of each of our maps as well okay you can use a different uh, image format if you want to but I think I'm just gonna do JPEG Okay, so we'll do a spec JPEG. All right, I'm going to do them on uh, 12 quality. You can take the uh, the quality down a little bit if you want to. Um, sometimes I save my uh, bump and spec maps on about 10, and I'll do the diffuse at like 12, but uh, I think I'll just leave this at 12 for now. Okay, so that's fine. Let's close that, and let's open up the uh, diffuse map. Okay, and we'll just save a JPEG of this. All right, save. 12 quality and OK. Alright, and let's just do the bump map too. And JPEG. Save. And OK. Alright, so let's jump over to Max and uh, set our shader up. Okay, so here we are back in Max, and uh, like I mentioned previously, I'm not going to go through the whole process of lighting and rendering the mailbox. Um, I'll leave that to you guys to do using uh, whatever renderer and light setup you want to use, but uh, I will show you how to quickly just, you know, add a couple of lights just so you can kind of preview what your materials are doing and our maps are doing. Okay, so let's just do that first. I'm just going to uh, jump out here and just add a few lights before we actually put our maps into the uh, material. Okay, so we'll go into the top view. I'm just going to turn the grids on kind of zoom out and let's just add a spotlight. Alright, so I'm going to go over to the lights panel, just grab a target direct light and we'll just drag one out over here somewhere. Alright, I'm going to kind of do it offset to the left, just aiming at the front. Alright, and let's right click up here and just go to views direct 01. Okay, and I'll let you actually look through the light. Okay, so I'm going to go down here to the light fall off button and then just uh, zoom this out a little bit. Okay, and we'll also zoom the hotspot out. Alright, and I'm just going to position this quickly. Okay, so I'm going to rotate it up so it's kind of aiming at the front top of the box. Okay, and let's just see here. Try to get a good uh, placement on this. Alright, so I'm going to stick it maybe somewhere like that. Okay, just out, out front and to the left over here. Okay, and then let's also add maybe an Omni light just so we have some backlight. Okay, and this is a really quick light setup, so you can take more time and actually do a proper proper setup and render. But we'll just do this quickly. Okay, so I'm going to grab an Omni and just stick one over here. That's on the other side, just over to the right there. Okay, just to get some light on this side. Okay, so let's grab our spotlight there and just open up the modify panel. Okay, for this one I'm going to turn shadows on, and let's just do maybe ray trace shadows. Okay. Uh, for the color, I'm actually going to change this to a slightly uh, yellowish color, yellowish white, just to kind of mimic, you know, sunlight. All right, so just go up a bit here. It doesn't have to be too yellow. Maybe just like that. Okay, and we'll close that, and let's make it a little brighter. I'm going to do maybe 1.3 on the multiplier. Okay, and let's go down to the directional parameters and open that up. I'm just going to tick on overshoot here. All right, and you can do that if you don't want to actually see the cone of your light in your render. Okay, so we'll turn on overshoot, and then let's select the Omni there. All right, and I'm not going to turn shadows on for this one. Uh, I am going to change the color though. Let's make this one maybe uh, kind of like a medium to light blue. Okay, and I think I'll just leave the multiplier at one. Okay, so yeah, you can always um, do renders, or you can right-click on the uh, perspective window there, or any viewport, and just go to views, and you can always turn on active shade here. Okay and it'll give you kind of like a, a render just in your viewport okay you can't blow it up but it'll just render it alright so if we make changes to our lights or anything it's going to update it in real time okay so if you grab your light and you move it you can see it'll quickly render it again alright so yeah I'm just going to do it like this because it's a lot quicker than, than going through the rendering process but uh, let's just actually get our material in here okay so we'll open up the material editor and we'll just use the standard uh, material again um, I always use V-Ray materials when I render, so I haven't used the standard material in a long time, so I think I'll just kind of keep this really uh, simple. Okay, so let's open up the maps rollout, and let's just change our PSD diffuse map to a JPEG, so I'm just going to click on it, 
click on it here, and then we'll just go to the desktop and find the JPEG version. Okay, there it is, and open. Alright, now let's go back up a level. We'll go down to the specular level box. Open that up, we'll choose bitmap. Find our specular map. Okay, JPEG, open it. Alright. And let's also add the bump map to the bump channel. Okay. Bump and open. Okay, so you can always blow this up to your uh, by dragging the corner. All right, and if you want to get a better look at your actual material here, you can rotate the sphere. If you right click and go to drag rotate, it'll actually let you click and drag to spin it. All right, so you can take a quick look at how everything's working. All right, it's not looking too bad. I wanted to have a you know somewhat dull finish to it, so it looks like it's kind of aged paint. All right, scratches are looking decent. Okay, so let's maybe add the specular map to our specular color channel. Okay, so we gonna drag it up there, drop it, and it'll ask if you want to instance copy or swap, and we'll just say copy and okay. Okay, and that's going to tone it down quite a bit, uh, probably a little too much. Let's maybe adjust this uh, level here. Let's try maybe 50%. Okay, I just want to get some of the highlight back. Let's try maybe 30%. All right, you can see down here in real time how it's uh, affecting it. All right, so that doesn't look too bad, actually, um, for a quick lighting job. Um, all right, so let's just do a really quick render before we finish the tutorial up. Okay, so I'm just going to open up the uh, render dialog. All right, hit the button, or F10. Okay, and we'll just do this maybe 8x6 from the perspective view, and let's just hit render. And it's not going to look fantastic. Um, you know, our lighting setup is really, really simple, and our materials are simple as well. We didn't spend a lot of time tweaking them, so uh, it's not a masterpiece, but it doesn't look too bad considering how fast we did it. Um, and like I mentioned, I, I use V-Ray uh, to do all my renders, and, you know, I find it can give you much nicer results than the Scanline render. So if you have access to V-Ray or a different renderer, um, Mental Ray comes with Max. You could always try that if you wanted to, or a different one. Uh, and you could probably, you know, really get a nicer quality render than this here. But yeah, um, like I said, I'll leave that to you and, uh, you know, whatever kind of uh, way you like to set your lights up or whatever you use for your render, you could uh, just tweak it until you're happy. Okay, and you could also play with the amounts here. Um, we did this really, really quick, so, you know, play around, see if uh, you can improve the quality of the material. You could also, you know, go back into uh, Photoshop and actually tweak the maps themselves, uh, the spec map maybe, if you want to bring some, some highlights out in different places or, you know, adjust the bump map. But uh, yeah, again, I'll leave that to you, and uh, I think I'll just end the tutorial here, uh, just because it's getting really long, okay? So apologies, I know I sped through this part uh, pretty quick, but maybe in a future tutorial I'll get a chance to actually, you know, go through the rendering process more in depth. Um, but for now, I think I'll, I'll leave it like this, and uh, overall I'm pretty happy with it. I think it came out uh, pretty good. Uh, a little overdone, you know, not super realistic, but that's okay. So yeah, uh, I hope you got a good uh, model, and I hope you enjoyed watching the tutorial and maybe learned something from it. So I guess that'll do it for this one, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.